Okay, guys, I'm going to do this quickly, okay? But the nice thing with a movie that's not so nice about my lectures is you can put the pause button. So here goes. I have a folder that just has this stuff in it. Let me navigate to it. Okay, all I have is an outline of Mexico, just a normal old shapefile outline of a country. Could be any region that you're interested in. And then this file is the, um, the zip file that you download from GBIF. You might get your points from God knows where, but if the, if the points come from GBIF, they'll look like this. So I'm going to unpack that zip file, and you can get the famous... CSV file that's not a CSV file. So we're going to go to Excel and we're going to open a clean spreadsheet and we are going to use this import button. And no, it's not a CSV file, it's a text file because it's tab delimited. And I need to tell it where that is. So it's right here. And yes, it is delimited. So I'm going to hit next. The delimiting is by tab. You see if it were by comma, it would look differently. So it's by tab. And I'm going to hit next. And I don't need to worry about column format. So there, it comes in. Give it a minute. I'm starting at the GBIF data just in case you guys someday want to work from GBIF data. You know, you might want to do a, a national summary of data from, uh, from your country, um, you know, some tax on across your country. Um, this is, you know, kind of a bunch of steps along the way to doing that. There's a more in-depth uh, procedure which involves inventory completeness statistics, and I'll, I'll give you guys the links for that um, at some point in the next couple of days. Let me see if there's a way to pause this so I don't waste your time. Doesn't seem that there is. Nope. So guys, sorry, but you're stuck with me. This will take less than an hour, but maybe more than a minute. We'll see. Oh, actually, there's even a progress bar down there, isn't there? There it is. Okay, so there's way more information that we need here. But just to give you a tour, there's the GBIF ID, which is a a unique, re a unique uh, identifier for the occurrence datum. I'm just keeping the species and the latitude, longitude, and all these others we can get rid of. Um, obviously and definitely, if we were to uh, be doing something for publication scale, uh, you know, essentially that level of quality, we would want to do quite a bit of data cleaning. So notice I just kept species, latitude, longitude. Okay, now I want to get rid of any um, blank things for species, so I'm just going to sort it. That's the easiest way. And you'll see down here at the bottom, well, Oops, I didn't have the whole thing. I didn't have the whole thing selected when I sorted it, so it only selected the first chunk of it. My bad. There we go. Now you see it's 183,000 records, but you also see that there are these records at the bottom that 
don't have species numbers or species IDs. Be really nice if this were going faster. Oops, I think I just killed Excel. No. Okay, so now I'm down to 183,000. I want to check for any missing values of latitude longitude. And again, there are a bunch. So I'm just going to chop those off. There'll be a lot more of these. Nope, sorry, went too far. Come on in here. Okay, there's an easier way to do this. I just go down to the end of this, and then down to the end of that. Okay, you notice we've lost about 7,000 records, but we still have more to get rid of because we have lots of duplicates. You can also see we have those infamous 0, 0 coordinates. I might as well go ahead and get rid of those. Okay. But notice we have lots of duplicates. Look at all these Colosseta Formosa from this one locality. Okay, so I'm going to go and make sure that I've selected the whole block. Looks like I have. Okay, I'm going to go to Data, Advanced Filter, and I'm going to select unique records only, and I'm going to take filter the list in place. So, here we go. And this is going to take a while, so I am going to turn off the recorder. I don't feel like uh, talking for 20 minutes while this cranks along. I'm going to, I'll be back in a couple minutes, but you won't feel it at all. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, at very, very long last, um, the copy in place has succeeded, which is to say we now have gotten rid of our duplicates. So I'm going to copy that. I just hit Control C. And I'm going to go to a blank sheet. It'll take a while. Sorry, guys. This is what happens when we deal with big, relatively big data sets. It's pasted. Remember, we were at 177,000. We're down to 48,000. Okay? So we've, we've really reduced our data set to less than a third of what it was. Okay. We are basically ready to take this over into our GIS, so I'm going to save it as a CSV file. There we go. I'm going to call this Mexico Occurrences, you guessed it, 1. Okay, 
done with that. Now in my GIS, I am going to hit um, Data Source Manager. I'm going to make sure I'm on delimited text and not on vector or anything like that. It's delimited text. And let's go to Mexico 1. I'm in the wrong place. Mexico Occurrence is 1. Okay, it looks like it parsed well. But notice that it says, it says no geometry, so I'm going to change it to point coordinates and verify that the X field is longitude and the Y field is latitude. Um, everything else looks good. So there's that. And I can see my occurrence data. However, I want to make this a permanent shape file. So I'm going to save features as as reshape file and I want to put it in the right directory and what is this going to be called? Mexico Occurrences 2. Um, we have our coordinate reference system correct. I think we're good. And so look, you're going to see it show up. It's, it's got a progress bar going right there. Mexico occurrences too. Good. So now we can just leave our occurrence data for a moment. We need our outline shape file. And that is that, but I messed up because I've left it under limited text. I'm going to change it to vector, and you'll see now the shape file is is clickable. Oops. It says invalid data source. So I'll go to a, another place where I have that stashed. I think I know what I did, and I think it was pretty dumb. But maybe you guys won't figure out what I did and how dumb it was and lose all respect for me. And if you've already figured out what I did, then you probably should lose all respect for me because I'm not very bright sometimes. There we go, Mexico outline. I'm going to move that down. Okay. Now what we want to do is, well, I'm going to be a little tidy. I want to get rid of these offshore, offshore occurrences now. And so here's one way to do it. I'm just going to select them all. That's what I would like to do, like polygon. This isn't crucial. It'll just make the results a little bit cleaner. If you guys are going to do serious kind of you know, for publication level work, then do a really good job of cleaning, please. So this is going to select everything within that polygon. I'm going to start editing that polygon. And then I'm just going to hit delete. It really would have been nice if that had worked. Oh, it did work. The thing is, I have the other data set on underneath it. Okay, so you see now only the Clarion Island ones are left, and that I think is uh, real. There are ravens out there. So I'm going to toggle editing off, and yes, I will save this. So now it's time to make my grid um, file, my mesh. And so I'm going to go to data management tools, no, geometry tools, no, research tools, create grid. Okay, 
I'm going to choose rectangle polygons. Thanks to, I guess it was Aaron who showed me that I could use layer extent. I want to use the Mexico outline extent. There I go. I want to do this one at one degree um, resolution because my previous one was very coarse. And I have to say I didn't really like it. Save to file. And this will be, well, it's not Mexico three, occurrences three because it's not occurrence data. So instead, I'm going to call it Mexico mesh one degree. Okay, obviously Mexico is smaller than uh, Africa, right? Now let's just do a fun thing just so you see another uh, functionality. It's a little more elegant than what we've done. I can take the grid and I'm going to go vector. I want to do select by location. There it is. So I want to select features from grid where the features intersect, yes, Mexico outline. And I want to do that by creating a new selection. So what this is going to do is it's going to select every square in grid that touches the Mexico outline. Let's see what happens. Again, people have a book or have, you know, something to do while these things process because they do take a while. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the movie and uh, and I'll be back when this is done. Okay. Okay, so that actually didn't take much time. Um, and all I wanted to do was show you a way to um, trim using uh, select by location. And so I've selected all of the elements of the grid that overlap the outline of Mexico. And you can even see the offlying islands generating grid squares. Um, so there it is without, there it is with. And as in all of these cases, there are many ways to do this. The easy one here, uh, I want to trim off all of the darker brown cells. And so the easy way is I can do uh, export, save selected features as, and I'm going to call this uh, Mexico Mesh 1D but number two. Check my uh, my. Reference system, it's fine. It says save only selected features. Like that. And you see now we have a grid that is just the squares that touch the outline of Mexico. Okay? So here are our occurrence data on top of this mesh. Sorry, trying to... Okay, so now what we want to do is link the points to the underlying grid square that they sit on top of. And so we're going to do that using a spatial join. And that, if I remember right, is in one of these. There it is. Join attributes by location. And I want to join 
Mexico occurrences two to the mesh one D two as in one degree uh, second copy. There we go. I want things that are points that are within a square. I want a one to many relationship. Let's go ahead and discard records that cannot be joined. And let's call this Maxco Mesh 1D3. You guys know my system, right? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay, so my spatial join finished, and so we can look at that by means of opening the attribute table. And what you see is the species name is all of this stuff, which comes, this part comes from the points, and this part comes from the polygons, but all I want is species and ID number. So I'm going to select the whole thing, copy it, and then go over to Excel. And paste it. And now I'm going to get rid of extraneous columns. There's this well-known text, WKT, which gives the geometry, but the geometry doesn't matter to me. All of those middle columns, and so I'm left with species, ID, and the infamous dummy. And I can propagate this down. Let's make sure it propagates all the way down, it does. And so then we're going to make, we're going to insert a pivot table. And that as a new worksheet so that we can save it easily as a CSV. And we want the ID numbers of our grid as the rows. We want the species names as the columns, and we want dummy in the middle. Looks like I did a couple extras. So I'm going to clean this up. Now you're going to notice that I have these because this is the sum. I don't want the sum. I want just ones and well, and zeros are blanks. And so I'm going to use the maximum value. Okay. And there we go. So now you see everything is turned to ones. Now you can't um, modify a pivot table. So I'm just going to take the middle portion out of this. Okay, and I don't want that bottom line, and I don't want that last column, because those are totals. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put it in a third sheet. There we go. And then one thing left to do, I need to add my number of species, and that is going to be equal to the sum of all of this over to column B and there you can see the number of species and I need to navigate down to the bottom of that list of course I don't remember where the 
So it's line 242. Yeah, sorry, I'm lost. So I need AJ242. I'm just going to, oops. I said I was going to use bad words, but I haven't yet. I've been good, I think. So it's that one. So this is just propagating my formula down. Some problem occurred. I've never seen that error before, but okay. So I'm going to do it again. It's B242. Oops. Through AI242. And I'm going to propagate that all the way up. Done. What was the problem a moment ago? I have no idea. But so long as it worked, I'm kind of okay with that. Okay, so there's the whole table. I'm going to save that as a CSV. And I guess I can call this mesh number four. And I'll even put in a note of what it is. It's the table. Oh, I saved it as an Excel file. And now I'm going to save it as a CSV, which is really what I needed. Okay, close that. And now I want to import that table just as a table, not as points like we did earlier. And so I'm going to go back to our add data layer. I'm going to bring it in as delimited text because that's what it is. This time it is delimited with commas. There we go. Comma separated values, yes, yes, but these are not point coordinates. This is no geometry, it's just a table. Add that. Get rid of some of these things. Um, I want to check to make sure that the attributes table has everything that I need. It looks like it has ones and null values. I don't really need to replace the null values with uh, zeros, it turns out. And so now what I need to do is, which one was I working with? Not that one. I was working with this one. So I need to join, check out this attribute table. Here's the ID variable. Okay, the ID of the grid squares. And this table has the same IDs. Here it's under the title of row, row labels. And so I'm going to just double click on this. I want to do a join that is based on a table. It's not based on spatial relationships. So I do it here. I go to joins. I hit the plus sign as add. The join layer is the table that I brought in. And the field in that table, remember, is row labels. And the field that matches it in my, in my mesh, in my grid, is this one, ID. I hit OK, and you can see that it has added the join. 
hit OK again, and let's check the attributes table of our grid file, and there are all those extra columns, and most important here at the end is number of species right here. Okay, and so now we're basically done. We, we want to do some things to pretty this up. So for example, we probably want to uh, make our Mexico outline transparent. So we can go to Symbology, Simple Fill, and just say, don't use a brush to fill it, but maybe give us a darker line for the outline of Mexico. And there it goes. And now let's do something nice with our mesh. So we can do categorized. We want to do this based on the number of species, which you remember is the last column. There it is. Now, if I classify it like this, I get something pretty ugly. OK, look at that. I can't see any spatial pattern, and that's, be that's because, look at the values. There are blues at 4, 13, and 14. That doesn't make any sense. I need something that puts those values in order. And so instead of using this random colors, I'm going to use some ordered thing, and it's got to be a one-directional order. So something like this one, which is white to blue but not this one, which is red to yellow to blue. So let's use, let's use the reds, how about? And you can see we go from 1 to 17, and it gets darker and darker and darker and darker. But notice all other values, which might be no data or no records, is even darker? No, that's not what we want. So I'm just going to click that off. Okay, and now let's see what we have. Looks a bit better, no? So that's basically it. If you want to export an image so that you can, you know, print it out and hang it up on your wall as a poster or send it to a colleague, you do this export map to image. Let's make it a bit bigger, 300 dpi. And let's save it. And we've got to navigate a little bit. And you can see it's exporting. It's taking forever to export. So check this out. Here's our final image. Final map, JPEG. And hello. There it is. OK. So there's the whole process for you. I hope it's useful. Great working with you guys. Bye-bye.